Listen, I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. I love this game. God Hand is easily one of my favorite games of all time. It was the very first design documentary I wrote a script for. A rather frustrating experience in a stage. You can spend your time in a casino area called the Barely Regal. I see what you did there, Shinji Mikami, and I like it. Which, as you can imagine, was sort of a train wreck. And it was one of the very first times I've ever streamed a game. Speaking of train wrecks. Job dropping attacks from my roulette wheel. There's just something about God Hand that connected with me more than any other game I've played. It definitely has its flaws, but when you're this passionate about a game, it's really hard to keep things entirely objective. But for the sake of integrity and fairness, I want to do my best to put my feelings aside and look at this game as unbiased as possible. So with that said, let me tell you why God Hand is the best game ever made. Hands down. Say hello to God Hand. You're the God you Hand! Gotta be kidding me! It's a hard game. A ball bustingly hard game. It's hard. But fair. These were the words that graced the E3 2006 trailer for God Hand. Developed by Clover Studios, yes that Clover. Directed by Shinji Mikami, yes that Mikami. Produced by Atsushi Inaba, yes that Inaba. And designed and written by Hiroki Kato, yes that Kato. God Hand was the last game developed by Clover Studios, with Capcom closing the development team only two days after God Hand released on October 10th, 2006. However, you can almost say it was the troubled history of Mikami and Clover Studios which led to God Hand being such a good game. To recount everything would probably take its own video. So here's an attempt to make a long story short. After the success of Resident Evil, Shinji Mikami was promoted to executive producer at Capcom. Mikami used this opportunity to make several games exclusive to Nintendo's GameCube, even going so far as saying he would cut off his own head if any of these games were to be released on another console. Capcom really likes money though, so they ported them to the PlayStation 2, telling GameCube owners that the exclusivity was a miscommunication. But on the bright side, we got to keep project number 03. Oh, thanks, Capcom. How nice of you. You really shouldn't have. Mikami, for obvious reasons, was not happy about this. He's a man said to be easily frustrated with bureaucracy and someone who is said to be very passionate and outspoken. He's also the kind of man who threatens to cut off his own head. So in order to keep their carpets clean and ease rising tensions, Capcom funded an independent Japanese game development company known as Clover Studios. The idea behind Clover was to allow Mikami and several other developers to focus on creating new intellectual properties. Even the name Clover comes from an abbreviation of creativity lovers. This gave Mikami and other developers the freedom they desperately wanted as creators. So their first game as a newly independent company was Beautiful Joe 2. Okay, but after that they were finally allowed to create Beautiful Joe Red Hot Rumble. Alright, but definitely after that was the game they really wanted to make. Beautiful Joe Double Tr- Oh, come on! Seriously, Capcom? 
you create a team to develop new properties, and all you have them do is make sequels? What are you, Capcom? Oh, yeah, right. Although it was never said what happened internally with Capcom and Clover, probably Mikami threatening to cut off other things, Capcom finally allowed Clover Studios to develop intellectual properties. The first of which was Okami. And geez, Okami probably deserves its own video at some point, but for the sake of time I'll say it's one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Critics agreed Okami received a lot of critical acclaim and awards, but it also received one of the most unfortunate awards in gaming history, being winner of the least commercially successful winner of a Game of the Year award by the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> With Okami's failure, it was only a few weeks after the game's American release that Capcom announced the closure of Clover Studios. Talks of Clover shutting down could have happened as early as April 2006, a time when God Hand was about 50% done in development. In fact, by the time God Hand was released, Shinji Mikami, Hideki Kamiya, and Atsushi Inaba were already gone. You could say that God Hand was already a doomed game. Its success wouldn't have been able to save Clover Studios, and it wouldn't have eased tensions between developers and Capcom. But it also meant that God Hand didn't really have any expectations set for it either. So while Mikami and the development team could have totally halfed assed the development because screw Capcom, that's why, they instead took the opportunity to do something they probably always wanted to do. That was make the game that they wanted to make. The result is a game that doesn't feel restrained or confined. God Hand wasn't designed to cater to a focus group or follow market trends. It's a game that even Mikami himself stated that he probably had too much freedom when directing. But that freedom is what made God Hand so interesting. It's a 3D action brawler when very few of those were being made. It's a game filled with humor when other games were trying desperately to get you to take them seriously. It's a game that's hard, ball-bustingly hard. During a time when games were becoming ball-caressingly easy? You know, it just occurred to me that genitalia is not a very good explanation of difficulty. Now, I've already talked about difficult games once before on this channel with Dark Souls, and there are a lot of comparisons that can be made between the two. They are both incredibly challenging, they both demand you to get good, and both games expect you to die. A lot. An exorbitant amount of times. More times than I'm going to recall this joke. But God Hand and Dark Souls handle their challenges in completely different ways. You could say that Dark Souls is a game about exploration. Of both your world and your options. The game rewards you for trying different items and finding different strategies. It's also a game about making mistakes and learning things the hard way in order to better understand your options. You could say that God Hand is more about mastery. It gives you every tool you need to beat the game right from the beginning, but it constantly demands your skill. And the tools you need to master are deceptively simple. You have a set of customizable attacks, dodges, and special moves. While you start off with a set of basic, pragmatic strikes, you can unlock different moves that cater to your style. If you want a combo filled with weak, rapid-fire attacks, slow but powerful hits, a series of kicks that allow you to juggle your opponent, or my favorite, drunken boxing that allows you to dodge while attacking, you have that freedom. But also understand that enemies aren't going to just let you beat them up. Attacks can be dodged, combos can be broken, and elaborate moves can be punished. So you need to be extremely confident in your skill set before you can even consider attacking your opponent. But in order to really excel at God Hand, it's more important to know how to defend yourself. You dodge attacks by using the right analog stick. Now I know what you're thinking, in a 3D game that's something you would normally expect to be used for the camera. God Hand instead has the camera directly behind your character making it look and feel like another game that Shinji Mikami also directed. I wonder what game that could be. Since there's no option to block attacks, 
Dodging is your only way to avoid damage. But it's not quite like Dark Souls dodging. God Hand is more immediate and responsive. More importantly, you can dodge at any time, even during one of your own attacks. In fact, you can cancel the recovery animation of your own attacks to follow up with another one immediately after it. It's nearly impossible to put yourself in a situation where you can't dodge. And finally, you have your other special abilities. Unleashing the power of the God Hand and God Roulette. As you fight, you slowly build up a tension meter that when released, makes you invincible and your attacks unblockable for a very short amount of time. God Roulette allows you to unleash a few very powerful attacks that can hit from a long range, hit multiple enemies, or even heal you. And these attacks are earned from power-ups that are dropped at random. These special abilities aren't very common and are there to get you out of trouble, but they aren't required and there's actually an optional challenge that requires you beating the game without using either of these abilities. So you'd think with the variety of attacks, the ability to dodge any attack, and having access to two high-powered special abilities that you can even beat the game without using, the difficulty of God Hand was a bit over-exaggerated. And right now you fall into one of two categories. You're either A. Someone who is familiar enough with game design to make logical conclusions of difficulty by accounting player options and comparing to other games and determining that, yes, actually that does seem like a feasible statement. Or, B, you've played God Hand. Guess which group is probably right. God Hand does give you a lot of advantages, but this is only so the game can throw whatever it wants at you. The game is constantly asking you to prove yourself and isn't afraid to put you in some bad situations. Just for example, anytime you defeat a regular enemy, there's a chance that the enemy will spawn into a bigger threat. Um, just like another Shinji Mikami game. I really wonder what game that could be. These new enemies hit harder, attack faster, are capable of instantly moving out of range or behind you, and are able to beat you in a matter of seconds. And this can happen at any time. Including times where you just unleash the God Hand to take out four enemies that were surrounding you. This game is not afraid of being a sadist. But alright, you died a few dozen times, finally got a hang of dodging, defeated a few enemies, and maybe at this point even made it to the second level. You're really getting a hang of this. Then all of a sudden, the words level up appear on your screen. Wow, you might say. A beat em up with RPG elements? Neato! And I'm just gonna put this chart right here. You approach your next enemy feeling more confident because after all, you just gained a level. Then that enemy, the one you figured out how to defeat reliably a couple of minutes ago, starts wrecking you again. I'm brutal and ruthless. Before you even know what happened, the game is asking you if you want to try again. And that's when you feel this feeling of dread wash over you as you finally realize it wasn't you who leveled up. It was your enemies. God Hand features a dynamic difficulty that adjusts itself around your skill. If you're doing well, defeating a lot of enemies, dodging attacks, then the game increases its difficulty. As you take damage, get knocked down, or are defeated, then the game reduces the difficulty. At higher difficulties, enemies become more aggressive, attack faster, and don't leave themselves as open. There also might just be more of them to deal with, just like another game Shinji Mikami made. I wonder what game that could- Actually, you might not have known about this feature in Resident Evil 4. It was never mentioned or even shown. You start at level 1, going to level 2 and level 3. Somehow manage to do well enough for level 3, then you go into the next and final level. What's that next level called? Welcome to die! Though, in Japanese, the word for 4, she, is also the word for death. So if you answered four, you technically aren't wrong. But as you can expect from a game that has a difficulty level just called DIE, it's a hard game. A ball-bustingly hard game. It's hard, but fair. So the important question is, what kind of hand does fairness play in all this? 
Fairness doesn't mean exactly what you expect it to mean in a video game. It doesn't mean having equal opportunity of success or failure. That means statistically, yes, that is fair. But no one really likes when a game is decided by a coin flip, and I don't exactly see anyone lining up to play Schrodinger's Mario. It doesn't mean having the exact same opportunities or abilities either. There are a lot of games that are asymmetrical and often put the odds against you. The challenge of a game is adapting and overcoming these odds. In fact, the entire genre of roguelikes is built on this conceit. What fairness means is that the player was given information, has all the tools he needs to act out on that information, and that information is going to be consistently reliable. Or to state it in a way that makes it more tangible, a game is fair if the defeat is more in the hands of the player than it is the opponent. When a game is unfair, it means that the game had an advantage that the player couldn't account for. In Simon's Quest, there are NPCs that outright lie to you, hidden areas that require you to bless every square inch of the world with holy water. Or how in a game like Operation Darkness has minefields that you can't see that can end up killing your character in a game that features permadeath. Or other games that require you to take leaps of faith into bottomless pits, or difficulty levels that cause the opponents to deal more damage and take more hits without giving the player any means to compensate, or games that feature heavy rubber banding, or it just outright lets the game cheat. This isn't the player's fault, and he can't do anything to stop it, so of course the player feels frustrated. Do you want angry video game nerds? Because this is how you get angry video game nerds. This is how a game like God Hand can claim that it is fair. Every enemy makes its presence known before it attacks, every attack is dodgeable, every enemy has small openings you can take advantage of, God Hand doesn't take any cheap shots. Well, besides the liter- Oh! Ball bustingly hard, I get it now! When you mess up, it's generally something that you misjudged or failed to react to. It's not exactly enjoyable to have your ass kicked and know it was your own fault but it also never leaves you with the sense that victory is out of grasp. And it's God Hand's fairness that makes you want to improve. God Hand doesn't take pleasure in seeing you fail. It isn't constantly telling you to prepare to die or you're dead. And when you fail, it's only asking you one question. Do you want to continue? Similar to games like Super Meat Boy, God Hand doesn't care about your failures, only your successes. It doesn't mean that God Hand is going to go easy on you. It just wants you to succeed on your own merits. But it does want you to succeed. God Hand is a game that rewards mastery. Once you get comfortable with the combat, breaking guards, and dodging counters, your attacks eventually stun your opponent, leaving them open for a powerful move. Just like another game Shinji Mikami made. These high damage moves are often intense button mashing sequences, which go completely unanswered by your opponent. This can include rapid fire punches, brain busters, and... The dynamic difficulty rewards with congratulating cheers of a crowd if you do well. Likewise, lose a level and the crowd isn't booing at you, they're more like disappointed awes. You even have the option to grovel to lower the difficulty back to the lowest level. But that option's almost there as a reminder of why you're playing the game. In a way, it's kind of embarrassing to have the game go easy on you. And once you finally reach that peak of mastery, well... As far as I'm concerned, God Hand is one of the most satisfying 3D beat-em-ups ever made, but it would be a sin for me not to talk about its story and how it dips its fingers at and shows its hand at... Okay, I'm sorry. There are really not a whole lot of good God Hand puns. I tried. I really did. Please don't get angry with me. Normally puns are in my gene... Let's... let's just move on. God Hand is famous for two things. It's difficulty, which I've spent already a long time talking about, and the other is something you might not expect. God Hand's storytelling. You play as Gene, a down-on-his-luck martial artist, 
who saves a girl named Olivia from a group of demons looking for the titular God Hand. Though he loses his arm in the process of defending her, Olivia offers him the God Hand, and now Gene must use his power to stop the four devas from resurrecting the Demon Lord Angra, or as he was known in Japan, Satan. Alright, I know what you're thinking. The story of God Hand isn't going to win any award. <laughs> Foolish mortal. I'm back, and now your time is... What are you doing here? <laughs> I have come here to claim what is rightfully mine. Silverdorf, I have come for your soul. Listen, hardly anyone watched that deception video. No one is going to get this reference. Go on, get out of here. Try to record a video. You don't have to be a jerk about it. I'm just trying to... Shadow of the Colossus is overrated. The story in God Hand isn't going to win any awards. But it's not what you say, it's how you say it. God Hand's focus is on absurd humor, filled with non sequiturs. Alright, so where's next? A floating bazaar. Huh. I'll need a yacht. What I hope is intentionally bad dialogue. Newsflash, big guy. You can wax on, wax off all you like. I'm still kicking your ass. Dated references? What do the five fingers say to the face? Sweda! In absolutely crazy situations. This game doesn't even know the definition of subtlety or restraint. And everything about the presentation is... Over the top. Just as an example, your enemies consist of typical thugs, whip wielding dominatrixes, wrestlers, clowns, luchador gorillas, a team of super sentai little people, and poison chihuahuas. And the majority of their taunts consist of Mike Tyson quotes. I'm Alexander the Great! He's no Alexander. My style is impetuous. My defenses are impregnable! Yeah, God Hand is that kind of game. Which is surprising because according to interviews, God Hand wasn't originally designed with this humor in mind at all. The game's producer, Atsushi Inaba, admitted God Hand was originally going to be designed a more hardcore serious action game, and decided to go with the humor after the audience reacted to the E3 reveal. To the untrained eye, it would seem like God Hand's attempts at humor are just going for cheap laughs and flaunting about how random it can be. I've got a killer ham! I've got a killer hand! Yay! You're gonna get it! You're gonna get it! Quit imitating me! Ah, this is dumb. But what it's really doing is setting the tone. Tone is very important in any storytelling medium because it informs you as a viewer how you should feel about the situation. This is done by the music, the world design, to something as simple as the words or even the cadence an NPC uses. Dark Souls, for example, delivers this pervasive sense of crestfallen in order to further intensify the game's difficulty. The Metal Gear Solid series is constantly reminding you how serious everything is so that you overlook how ridiculous the situation is. Even the enemy design in games like Mega Man is informing you differently than enemies in Mega Man X. Tone is just one piece of storytelling, but it's an important keystone. It's fairly obvious from the outset that God Hand is going after a different goal with its storytelling. The game doesn't have a deeper meaning and is by no means a good or even interesting story. Instead, God Hand's storytelling lightens the mood and creates the sense of levity. It's hard to be angry or even frustrated at the game's difficulty because the game is constantly reminding you to have fun. I mean, one of your moves involves hitting an enemy with a celestial baseball bat into orbit. The game isn't taking itself seriously, so why should you? So for a game that is considered to be one of the more difficult games out there, it never really feels like it. And on a more personal note, I feel the humor in God Hand is what makes it so memorable. It's a game that has a lot of personality and character. Not every joke lands, but nothing feels manufactured or forced. Even the more insensitive moments... He's such a sexy man! Just my type! I'm not that kind of guy! Don't feel like they're done to create controversy. 
I wouldn't be all that surprised if the majority of the writing was just the development team trying to make each other laugh. And this makes God Hand come across as very genuine and honest. It feels like Clover Studios wasn't just making a game, but rather like they were writing a love letter. The simple story is reminiscent to very early arcade games. There's plenty of references to games like Street Fighter or anime like Fist of the North Star. Everything included with God Hand makes it feel like it was made from the heart. It's by no means a perfect game, but it gives everything it can. Even Mikami's head. And I think that feeling resonated with others. It's easy to take a look at review scores, including a particularly infamous one, and come away with the feeling like God Hand was a niche or mediocre experience. But upon reading them, most of them had surprisingly positive things to say about the game. It did require a lot of reading between the lines, but there's a lot of passion and high marks hidden amongst complaints of the camera and lack of graphical polish. I mean, it has to mean something that IGN, who was responsible for giving the game its lowest score, eventually ended up placing it on its top 100 PlayStation 2 games. And while it's easy to blame reviews or lack of marketing for God Hand's poor sales, and don't get me wrong, that probably contributed, I think the answer was a little bit more clear cut than that. God Hand wasn't popular for the same reasons that makes it great. It wasn't designed for everyone. God Hand was made before games like Dark Souls created the appeal for difficult games. And during the time when bigger, more graphically impressive games like Gears of War or Final Fantasy XII were released. Mikami himself blames God Hand's commercial failure on the fact that he had too much freedom while designing it. He really was making the game just for himself. And while in some cases that can be bad, I respect him for sticking with his artistic vision. Call me selfish, but I think God Hand was the perfect swan song for Clover Studios. And I don't know if it would be as fondly remembered if it was designed to please everyone. So that just leaves the question to what happened to God Hand after that. As it was mentioned before, God Hand was Clover's last game before Capcom absorbed them. With Atsushi Inaba, Hideki Kamiya, and of course Shinji Mikami. Leaving and forming Platinum Games. In a way, God Hand's legacy continues on with them. Games like Mad World, Bayonetta, and Metal Gear Rising sharing more than a few similarities with the original 3D brawler. It's disappointing that God Hand itself, though, was always a game that's been on the edge of a rebirth. Gene was considered as a character for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 before being outed by another Clover favorite, Okami's Amaterasu. Capcom has teased multiple times about God Hand's possible future, including a release on Steam or possibly even a sequel. Even Shinji Mikami himself had stated that one day he would like to make a sequel to God Hand, ending with the somewhat hopeful statement of, someday, I'll do it. And you can bet on that day, I'll be one of the first people talking about it. However, whether it happens or not, we still have God Hand, a game with a lot of character built from the experiences of the people who made it. And I think that's a good time for me to remind you that gaining experience builds character. This is Soberdor, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about difficulty, check out my video on Dark Souls, where I talk about that, community, and getting good. Or if you're interested in learning more about Shinji Mikami, I have a two-part series on Resident Evil that I happen to do with my friend Dead Palette. And if you want to see more videos as they're released, remember to subscribe. Soberdorf is a Patreon-sponsored show, so a very special thanks to those who made this possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron and seeing what kind of rewards you can get, you can check out patreon.com slash the Soberdorf. Don't act like you don't like a Soberdorf. Soberdorf.